Hey, this is Sasha. Welcome to another episode of Hungry for Returns. And in this show, what I want to do is answer your trading and investing questions, whether it comes from options or just stock trading, based on my own personal experience and understanding. So here we go. Today's question is about managing or more really about taking profits uh, of a butterfly. So take a listen and here we go. Hi, Sasha. Jim of a thousand questions here. My question for today is regarding how to manage butterflies. Because I am still working, I like to write sell orders on the positions I have. I don't need to hit home runs in the stock market. I am content with making a small 2% per month if possible. So my question is regarding butterflies. If I write a butterfly for a cost of $1 per contract, and I want to write a good till canceled order to exit the position to lock in my profits, at what price point should I write my exit order? Is a 50 cent profit too low? Is a 2 or $3 profit too high? That's my question for today. Thanks, Sasha. Okay, so this is going to vary depending on uh, the spread that you're putting on, the stock that you're trading, the volatility conditions that we're in. So there's a lot of variables that go about with taking profits into strength. As far as making 2% a month, uh, I think that's fair. And, uh, you know, with experience, that shouldn't be a problem trading butterflies if you're managing them accordingly. Uh, so I want to give you a little bit of a guideline when it comes to butterflies uh, or really option trading in general of when to take kind of your profits. So uh, the first thing is it's going to depend on your setup and how long you're in the trade. So if you're in a shorter term duration, let's just say 20 days or less, then you'll take your money. You'll be in the trade a lot less. Uh, you might take your money a little quicker. If you're in the trade a little longer, then you'll be in the duration a little bit longer and you might make a little bit less. Typically, what I would say is you're trying to stretch, whether you're doing yoga, you're trying to stretch and continue to grow. And the same thing here with option trading is you're trying to stretch your profitability potential. So let's say I have a butterfly kind of set up like this. If you want to make it a little more balanced, you could go ahead and uh, increase uh, one of the sides on the wings and make it a little more balanced. And when you do this is you're starting to look at, okay, well, how far or what do I want it to do? And when do I start taking my profit? So that's kind of, I guess, the big question. And the thing is, is that when you're looking at the profitability of this, this one is, if we're looking at the duration, it's about 57 days out. What you want to do is start looking at when that curve starts to get too far extended to the wings or to the edges or when you come into maybe too much profitability. It's almost at the point when you're getting a little more greedy is when you should be taking those things off. So initially when you're just putting on and trading options, you're going to probably take your butterflies off maybe just a few days into them. Hey, let's just say you put on a trade for $3,000, you might take it off for $100, $150 profit. And that's kind of a nice sweet spot because you're stretching your muscles, right? If you first try and bend down and touch your toes and you can't do it and you're this far away, well, you got to get more practice in, right? You got to do it more often. So at first it might be $50, $100, but a little sweet spot. It could be a quarter of a percent. You know, it's not a lot. Later on, you start stretching a little bit more. So that white line will start getting into more of your favor. You might see some positions, let's just say three months of doing these, maybe six months of doing this. You might have one or two in there that you made $370, you know, from a max profit of about 2,900 or so. Uh, then again, you know, if you do that a couple times, then again, you'll start stretching things, right? So a few more days might go by or a few more uh, days might go by into the next segments. So let's just say you do three to six months of $100 profit, three to six months of two $300 profit. Then if that's good, then try and pull it a little further to maybe five or six hundred dollars. So you're constantly stretching that a little bit. I would say once you're kind of getting into these butterflies where, uh, you know, you're kind of, let's just say a little bit 20% profitability of your max, just getting in 20% 
of what your total maximum that you could do, that's starting to start to push it. Now it depends on the type of butterfly that you do though, of course. So let's just say this butterfly just kind of hung out here for weeks and weeks and weeks and you know I'm still looking for a price increase you know and I'm actually positioning this butterfly let's just say a little bit further out and I'm looking for that price movement and it's just hanging out and I'm okay I'm in my sweet spot right I feel comfortable with that because that's the type of butterfly I set up so I might get lucky here and there where hey this thing is expiring and getting close to expiration where Hey, I'm up already $600 and it's starting to actually move in my favor and then I'm getting into $1,800 which let's just say it's about 60-70% of my maximum profitability. Now you're starting to get into greed territory or hey this is kind of a lucky situation it worked out in your favor and those may happen from time to time but I wouldn't say it's as common but again it just depends how you set up your trade and positions. So I'd say by then definitely start taking your profits off uh, even if you were back in the lower price or close to your wing, you know, and you had three or four contracts, you might take one or two of those off. So it's important to slowly start stretching. Uh, you know, as you start getting better at stretching, you'll be able to reach further and touch your toes further. The same thing here. As you get a little bit better, you know, you'll try and go a little further. You know, from a hundred dollar profit you might go to two three hundred dollar profit or from a quarter of percent you might go to a half a percent and so on and so forth you slowly start increasing that time and time again and you'll really be able to see that because you know you're doing these butterflies usually on the same vehicles or the same stocks or ETFs or indexes time and time again so the first six months you might only make let's say a hundred dollars uh, from an average sometimes you might lose 50 or hundred dollars sometimes you might make hundred and fifty dollars but that's kind of your range then you try and increase that to 150 maybe 200 and once you get into about half of that profitability by then you know half of your max you'll start to really get an understanding of okay well what's really my potential how far can I really stretch this thing because uh, eventually it's just the risk starts to outweigh the reward because once you start getting into let's say all the way up here and things are starting to move against you and you're 30% in there, $700 in, on $2,400, you know, you want to probably start peeling things off. You don't want to be greedy because I've seen where these things can come back very quickly and then you actually end up with a losing $1,000 position when instead you could have had a positive $700 position. So I hope that makes sense. You know, um, it's not really so much about the, the amount as far as the, the contract size, like 50 cents to a dollar that you're taking things off. It's more of your potential or, or profitability. And you're looking at the days that you're in the trade too. So, you know, if you're in a 60 day trade, well, you might take it off in 30 days, maybe 20 days. You'll, you'll be in the trade a lot longer on longer term duration trades because the theta decay is a little slower. On shorter term duration trades, you'll be in them a little bit less, but you have a pricing problem because if price wiggles around, there's a pricing issue, but at least volatility is not as big of a deal because the theta will make up for that Vega problem. Okay. Whereas longer term duration trades, you have a, a bigger Vega and a Vega problem, but not as much of a pricing problem. So anyways, I hope that makes a little more sense and gives you a little perspective uh, to kind of stretch a little further on your trades. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter by hitting that button right there or asking your own question. You can go there, go to the website, ask your question, record it, and get an answer later by video because the videos are much more detailed. And if you want to just subscribe on YouTube, then hit the subscribe button right here. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.